the Lewis acids that are different. Because the Lewis acid is not a proton donor, it's an electron pair acceptor. Going hunting for electron pairs. And in the Bronsted Lowry acid base system, that would be our electron pair acceptor, wouldn't it? But then, so is that. And in fact, is it every positive body? Yeah? Wouldn't every positive ion be a good attractor of electron pairs? Yes. Okay? There are other things besides positive ions that will do that as well. Ooh, remember this? Boron, how many valence shell electron pairs? Um, Three. Bonded with hydrogen, how many hydrogens is a bond to? Three. What was, what was exceptional about this? Empty orbital, remember? What do you think that could be capable of doing? Accepting an electron pair, huh? Lewis acid. Okay. Now, I'm going to back up. We talked about sodium carbonate <coughs> containing sodium ions and carbonate ions. We said the carbonate ions grab a hold of hydrogens from water and that affects the hydroxide concentration and that affects the hydronium ion concentration. We ignored the sodium ion. Why did we do that? Couldn't the sodium ion act as a Lewis acid? Take a look at your solubility rules. How good an electron pair is a sodium ion? Apparently, not very good, huh? If you put sodium ions and hydroxide ions together in water, not a big attraction there, huh? So our solubility rules actually provide us a way of judging the strength of Lewis acids. Sodium ions, not very good attractors of hydroxide ions, are they? According to the solubility rules. On the other hand, ferric ions, ooh, pretty good at attracting electron pairs, right? From hydroxide ions. And not surprisingly, ferric ions are also insoluble with a lot of other negative ions, like, like phosphate ions, sulfide ions, carbonate ions, things that are also strong bases. In fact, one could look at a precipitation reaction as a Lewis acid base reaction. A strong Lewis acid with a strong Lewis base. And they are insoluble together because they hang on to each other really tightly. Does that make any sense? Remember what I said about Lewis acid base theory being a lot broader? Being able to do more things with Lewis acid base theory? More than we usually need to do which is why Lewis acid base theory is not as broadly used as well. As, uh, as, just like Arrhenius acid base theory, Lewis acid base theory is not used a lot either, but for the other reason. It's a little too broad sometimes. How are we doing? Bottom line is, if I give you the name or formula of an ionic compound, can you talk about what happens to the pH? What are you going to look at? You're going to look at the negative ion. How good a taker of hydrogen ions is it? Good? How can you tell? On our list of bases, this one's pretty strong. Not good. How can you tell? On our list of bases, pretty weak, right? So we don't expect chloride ions to affect the pH of a solution. We definitely expect carbonate ions to affect the pH of a solution, right? After we look at the negative ion, let's look at the positive ion. How good an attractor of hydroxide ions is this ion? On our solubility rules, they tell us not good at all. So we don't expect sodium ions to affect the pH. But our solubility rules for hydroxide tell us that this ion is a good attractor of hydroxide ions. And if you can take hydroxide ions out of the solution, you can affect the hydronium ion concentration. Well, what about if you had something that was like both a, a good acceptor of hydroxide and then 
also like this and this. Yeah. And what happens when you try to put that so in water? So can, uh, it won't dissolve. Because oh. it's insoluble. You know why it's insoluble? Because you've got a strong Lewis acid, which has a very strong attraction for electron pairs, and you've got something that's a very good provider of electron pairs, a strong Bronsted Lowry or Lewis base. And when you put them together, they hang on to each other really tightly. So we don't have to deal with that because these two things wouldn't dissolve in water to a very great degree at all. Okay. Now, what happens when you have a compound like this? What ions are made when that dissolves in water? Sodium ions. Do we expect sodium ions to act as a Lewis acid and lower the pH of the solution? No. And chloride ions. Do we, accept, we expect chloride ions to act as a strong Bronsted-Lowry base and raise the pH of the solution? In other words, when we add sodium chloride to water, what happens to the pH? Nothing. Can you dig it? To me, this is a great way to understand Arrhenius acid base theory, Bronsted Lowry acid base theory, and Lewis acid base theory, is these three questions right here. Understanding how the individual ions can affect the pH of the solution explains a lot about Arrhenius, Bronsted Lowry, and Lewis acid base theory. <coughs> Yeah. The alternative would be Friday. Yeah. <laughs> we still have two labs to do. Uh, one of which I think I'm going to have to demo for you. No, the other one takes us the entire period, the entire block period. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> the acid based titration. That's our last lab where accuracy is an issue. <laughs> At least it's the last. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing that? After break. After break. We won't quite be ready by Friday. Okay. Let's uh, talk for a few more minutes and then we'll take a break. How are we doing? Should we ask them that? <coughs> Wait, I have a question. Question is about 18, 19, and 20. Well, it's a question about the test, actually. Will it be like the week after spring break? Because a lot of people are going to Disneyland. Mm -hmm. I guess we should just suspend school for those days, you know? So yeah. Yeah. You guys can go to Disneyland. What in the world can we do without you guys? Yeah. You guys should have parties not take the test. Yeah. Not no, you should not take the test. If the test is on the day when you're gone, why, then you'll take it when you get back. Okay. <laughs> it may be possible for you to take it before you go. Some students prefer to do that, and it is the wise thing, assuming that you're ready for the test. Uh, do you think you could go in the lab for problem 19? Sure. So first of all, in our range of acid-base theories, what would we call this? Base, Bronsted, Lowry, Arrhenius, Lewis, what? No, someone doesn't have notes today. What's that? It's an Arrhenius base because it contains hydroxide ions, doesn't it? Right? And if I make a if I make a point zero zero one two five molar solution of that, what ions are present? Aluminum ions, which we'll ignore, and 
hydroxide ions, and what would the concentration of aluminum ions be? 0,0125 molar, and hydroxide ions would be 0,0375 molar, right? Well, if we know what the concentration of hydroxide ions is, hydronium ions concentration must be equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 0 0.00375. Yeah? Hello? Yes. 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 Which I believe comes out to be hmm, 2.67 times 10 to the negative 12. If you're a little rusty doing math with uh, exponential notation, you know, brush up. It's not a man. It's not funny. What do you think? There's a reason why we like to write it like this, huh? Because there's going to be 12 zeros in the answer otherwise. If you want to write it, you can. It makes me count zeros. To see if you had it right. Don't, for every mole of this, don't I get three moles of hydroxide ions? So that is three times that. chance for the weather to be crappy over there this time of year. You know. <coughs> there too, isn't it? We're up. <laughs> Are those, she in Vienna these days? I don't know. She was going to like Prague London and, and then Prague. Prague and Vienna and something. Something like, like that. that. <laughs> How are we doing? And then once we get that, what are we going to do with that? We're going to take the log, change the sign. Please remember that to get the pH, you have to deal with the hydronium concentration, right? You can't take the log of the hydroxide concentration and change the sign and get pH. But you know what you do get if you take the log of the hydroxide concentration and change the sign? You get pOH. That's what it's called. Guess what the P means? Take the log, change the sign. In mathematics, we call this an operator. The little P means take the log, change the sign. And we have other things that we will do that to. But we're dealing with pH, aren't we? pH goes back to our Henius acid base theory when it was thought by chemists that an acid like HCl broke up into ions just like an ionic compound did. And that we had hydrogen ions surrounded by water molecules moving around in solution. That's why it's called pH and not food. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I don't know. You have to be like this. Take break. It's break time. Woo! Are you going to phone break right Okay, take it off now. It's Bye, really Abby. zoomed up on your face Okay, now. that's Ooh. cool. Look at your eyes. What? No. Zoom it on Brian's face. Let's not okay. zoom it on me.